What would you say are the highlights for you, some recent issues? Uh, a very recent one is the issue which has just been put into print of the new chemistry of the elements. Uh, and this is personal for two reasons. One, I'm an inorganic chemist, and, and this, as it were, is my ter scientific territory. But beyond that, uh, the issue is dedicated to Lord Lewis, Lord Lewis of Newnham, who sadly died last July. And uh, Lord Lewis uh, was a very distinguished inorganic chemist, and he was a great mentor to me throughout my career. Uh, another one is uh, we had uh, an issue uh, concerned with nanochemistry and nanotechnology, which was guest edited by uh, Professor Chun Li Bai, who, who is the president of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and his colleague, Professor Chen Wang. And so, uh, in one sense, it was a first to have guest editors who were exclusively based in China. And through that, uh, I think the profile of the journal uh, increased in, in, in China. There are also a number of other issues that, that I would highlight. We're very fortunate in one sense in that Philosophical Transactions uh, publishes the um, scientific content, not formally the proceedings, but the scientific content of the prestigious Royal Society discussion and uh, Theo Murphy meetings. And a recent one uh, is the story of the Higgs boson, which of course captured people's attention worldwide and Peter Higgs, of course, rightly received recognition in the Nobel Prize. We're producing an anniversary issue for each of the Phil Trans <laughs> yes, journals yes. Uh, for the anniversary, yeah. and I just wondered, um, do you have a particular favourite article there? No. <laughs> I, I have 16 uh, favourite articles in, in the sense that Philosophical Transactions A will could be comprised of 16 commentaries on uh, papers that have been uh, remarkably significant in their scientific impact throughout the 350 years. And we have uh, papers from several of the scientific giants that people will recognize. Newton, Maxwell, Faraday, Davy, Priestley, Jewell, to name but a few. And the commentaries each have brought out some fascinating aspects of the discovery, its scientific context at the time, and how long uh, that, that influence has lasted but also some very intriguing personal aspects of the, of the life of, of these scientists. How would you say research publication has changed over your career? I started my career in 1968. And uh, yes, you were encouraged to publish uh, in, in terms of uh, your scientific credibility, uh, to make sure that your research students and other colleagues got credit for the scientific discoveries that, that, that were made, and to maintain your international profile. And eventually, of course, uh, if you got enough prestigious publications, you would get promoted. But the pressures that, that are now uh, present in, in terms of publishing, and I'm looking at it primarily from, from the younger members of staff, but younger members of staff have a lot of pressure to publish their work and, and I think, for me, disappointingly, it matters much more where they publish it th than what they publish. Uh, if we look back at uh, philosophical transactions, uh, what was its early role in, in 1665? Well, it's, it's um, difficult to think back to a point before journals, I think, for many people today. But <laughs> we have to remember that um, Phil Trans was actually the world's first science journal. Um, it was born out of an extensive network of correspondence between Henry Oldenburg and the various scientists in the UK and around Europe at the time. Um, that wasn't the most efficient way of exchanging information, of course, so Henry was the first secretary of the Royal Society. He decided it would be more practical um, and more efficient to actually organise it into a series of collections of the most interesting things. Um, and in so doing, he really established the... Um, the four fundamental principles that journals still use today. That is scientific priority, having your name and a date dis associated with discovery, um, archival, of course, dissemination, um, and p interestingly, peer review, which um, was invented a short time after the, the very beginning of the Filtrans, and which is widespread, of course, in all academic journals mm -hmm. today. What has been the most significant change in scientific publishing during your personal career? pretty clearly to me the biggest change is open access. 
So the notion that uh, there should be no barriers to reading science, which obviously has um, a great deal of support, and increasingly so, one of the biggest issues um, for science publishing to grapple with is, is, is data in general, but particularly big data. And increasingly, people expect to have the data shared and associated with the publications. And I think for journals and publishing in general to be able to really grapple with that is quite a challenge. How is it peer reviewed? How is it stored? Who should be um, stewarding the data, if you like, or curating the data? So I guess that's probably the biggest challenge. But I think in general, um, there is also the, 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 the challenge of the introduction of the internet and the web, which although is now quite a long time ago, we're still not seeing the full benefits of that, I think, to the publishing process. We put our journals online, essentially, but I think there is still a lot of development there in terms of making the most of, of that technology. What aspirations do you have for the future of philosophical transactions? Well, I think Philosophical Transactions has remained a very strong publication for the last 350 years. I mean, it's, 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 con it's been in continuous publication all that time. It has, of course, evolved. If you look at the early issues, they don't look much like <laughs> <No>. today's issues. <laughs> I think what's special about Phil Trans, there, I, I would say two things, actually, about the journal today. One is that it's a themed issue journal. And so each issue takes an overview of a particular area of science, a particular field of research, and takes the best people working in that area to produce reviews, some original data, but summaries provide a really good overview of a field. And I think that's still pretty, pretty rare in the publishing world. And I would say the second thing is, is actually its breadth. Um, so Filtrans obviously now is divided into um, two parts, the life sciences and the physical sciences. Um, and so within, a, within one or, or other of, of the journals, you can actually get a very wide variety of articles right across the life sciences or the physical sciences. And again, I think that breadth of coverage is quite unusual in today's journal publishing.